Hi, and welcome to Laura's View and Tarot 2. I am so glad you're here. Today's date is Wednesday, October 16th, 2024. In this video, I want to take a look at something that surprised me uh, when I was listening to it, but it made sense, and I thought it would be a great topic to address in a video. But first, just a personal note from me. I freely and openly admit that I am still learning and growing. Every day I learn new things. I am seeking to have more information that's accurate at my fingertips to unlearn things that have been programmed into me that were false. I'm very much a work in progress and I'll never claim different because I think that it's a process that continues through lifetimes <laughs> if we're willing to grow. You know, if we're determined to stagnate, we do that too. So last week when Hurricane Milton was heading towards the eastern seaboard, I did a read about the hurricane and the information I got ended up being accurate that the power of the storm was going to be mitigated and might even to some extent be directed for, you know, putting that energy to good use. What I didn't think to ask, I just assumed that because weather manipulation technology is on both sides of the political spectrum, you know, in their toolboxes, that that was how the storm would be mitigated. And I had so many viewers that wrote me and said, I'm glad you addressed this and said that the storm will be mitigated. Our group, there was groups from Connecting Consciousness, there were groups that were just light worker affiliated, whatever, might not have any affiliation at all, but just a group that were gathering and churches were praying that the storm would be calmed. There was some great advice that came out in the uh, comments too. One viewer said, don't ask, don't send love to the storm. That could possibly be transmuted. Send calming energy to the storm. So I thought I was reading today and um, watching some videos and I saw one that I will link in the description and I'm going to pop over to it real briefly. I'm not going to play it. I'll just let you see it. There'll be a link for it in the um, description box. And it is um, supposedly some channeled information from a Pleiadian channeler. And I'm not a big fan of channeling because it's so easy to have those messages be, you know, polluted a little bit if you don't have protections and stuff. But I listen to a wide variety of things and I listened to this. And one of the things it said was that we had, we being the human race, had really done a nice job. Those of us that gathered in groups or singly and were praying that the storm would be, this Hurricane Milton would be mitigated, that the storm would be calmed, that it would lose power and strength, that it would dissipate. That was what had made the difference. Interesting to think about, isn't it? Because, you know, the power of intention is what comes before the effect of manifestation. And people had that intention that I'm going to send calming energy to that storm. I am going to send my energy to seeing it mitigated to. So we had the intention and there were enough of us apparently that had that intention that we made the manifestation happen. Now, I've got a reason I'm I'm leading up to something here. But first, let's confirm if that information in the video was accurate, that um, it was light workers. It was, and I call us light workers, white hats. It was, it was everyday people, people of faith, people that are light workers, people that uh, are just good, kind, sincere humans, lifting up their intentions and prayers that... Milton would be mitigated. Was that, is that true? That that's what made the difference. We as a collective are getting gaining in that manifestation power. So there's a yes or no element to that, plus additional insights and information the universe wants us to know. I'm going to switch the camera and we'll ask the cards this question and find out together if it's true that there is a lot of happiness about the growth and development of the human race that we're learning how to make manifest some powerful things and we're only just beginning i believe that but was this a case of was this the first example of some of that mitigate mitigation and manifestation power with milton <laughs> a lot of m's there <laughs> a 
Okay, I'll switch the camera and oh, first I promise to let you see the video I'm referencing. It's a 10 minute video. I enjoyed it and I'll listen to some other things by this channel, no problem. But again, like I said, I, I always have my discernment on high when I am the leader of the Pleiades, there is uh, and I channeling the Pleiades, involved. Okay, the Cabal did not expect this. The Pleiadians, the Lear is the, the video. And there'll be a link to it in the video description box. Is there truth in the speculation and assertion that Milton's energy loss was because of the manifestation of intention by good humans that the storm should be calmed, as opposed to technology intervention and weaponry? And let's uh, let's phrase that so that that the majority of the storm dissipation was due to um, the intervention based on prayers and intention of good humans, plus additional insights and information the universe wants us to know. Okay, <laughs> our first card is the devil. That was the storm. Okay, then we have the four of cups. Looks like I was overlooking something when I thought it would all be done by white hats and technology. The fool. Five of cups. So sad, Cabal. King of cups. The lovers. And we got our yes with the ace of swords. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about these cards as they show here, although I was making comments as I saw them and the uh, um, downloads that came with them, so you kind of know where we're going with this. We definitely got our yes. So pat yourself on the back if you were praying that this storm would not be as deadly as predicted, that it be calmed, it be diverted. However you were praying, it was the effect that changed us from this to this. Okay. We had the intention, we had the prayer, we had the hope, we were beseeching according to our faith practices or spiritual practices. It was super effective. Okay, so we had Milton. <laughs> and uh, like I said, now my, my first thought with this, this card is always about, um, a, now one of the meanings of this card can be rest. So yeah, there was an abatement of the power of Milton. Absolutely. But I, I felt like I was getting a little bit of a spanking by the universe here that I had overlooked that as one of the reasons why there was that mitigation that they were telling me about. So, you know, I got, I got spanked by the universe there on that one. Then in the recent past, the fool, we are starting out on a journey of learning as a human race, as individuals, and then as a collective our power of manifestation. Absolutely. We're at, the, we're at the starting gate, but we're there, okay? Maybe we're in preschool and we're learning some numbers and letters and getting ready to put them together or learn the entire alphabet, but we're there. Now, <laughs> the, uh, the, the Five of Cups, again, I think kind of refers to the fact that this power that was demonstrated by the prayerful collective, okay, has saddened and I'm getting the feeling that it's like both sides of the current world paradigm, okay? Again, I see us now not so much as left against right or conservatives against progressives or liberals, but I see a fading and failing power structure in the world that is not happy about it. Even if they're light filled, they don't want to let go too much and they're sad. <laughs> well, too bad. We're getting it. <laughs> and we're going to move on without them if they don't get on the train, right? Okay. We got the near future cards showing up here. Beautiful cards, both of them on either side of the King of Cups. So I, they're making him have his best options for what's being told in the read. And that is that, uh, first of all, the uh, we can 
make things happen that we want to make happen. The cups are our feelings things. So when you feel, if you're feeling that power, if you're feeling that effectiveness, this is good because we had it. We did it. We calmed the storms. We, we, okay. Light workers that also would identify as being white hearts or white hats. And that's me <laughs> and probably many of you. Now the lover's card, again, we need to uh, join together um, and uh, um, unite in purpose more often and manifest even more, but we're going to be able to do it. We are absolutely going to be able to do it. Like I said, baby steps, but we're taking them, okay? Let's get two more cards and see if the universe wants us to know more about what was going on. Knight of Cups, working with the Queen of Swords. Okay, again, Cups are our suit that talks about emotions and feeling it also holds liquids and we were asking about milton's mitigation okay the uh the knight of cups and especially where he landed as he did on top of our subject card which was shown by the devil is just indicating that you know even with a fading power ability we have to use our discernment always because they are going to try to trick us they are they being anything that wants to hold humanity back from reaching their full potential. And like I said, unfortunately, there are some short-sighted light workers, or, or what I would consider white hats, that, that would fall under that. It's like, no, 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 you don't have to move past having, you know, we'll just be good overseers and we'll be good protectors. We, uh, we won't do what the other guys did. Well, how about if we move past all you guys? <laughs> And then the Queen of Swords was the final card. Again, just like I said, she, she's kind of, these work together to some extent on the information they, they give to us. And she is a card that always, she's very clear thinking and patient. And she is telling us, you know, use your intelligence, you know, be clear thinking, be patient, um, keep your eye on the prize. If you have an objective that you want for your intentions, your prayers, um, don't lose sight of it and hold on to it because it is powerful and effective. Let's recap. I shared a video that I watched earlier today that was supposed to be a message from the Pleiadian Council that humanity is to be um, congratulated on being the key component of Milton, Hurricane Milton in the United States, losing power, anticipating. And so I thought, let's ask the tarot cards about that, because up until that point, I had been giving most of the credit to what I saw as weather modification weaponry that was in good hands, that it was utilized. So I asked the universe, I said, you know, is there truth in this, uh, what we're being told, that there's more credit going that should go to people who prayed and had intentions and meditated and added their psychic energy to the storm being mitigated, downgraded, dissipated, all the things that ended up actually happening with it. Um, and we got a resounding yes. Okay. And we were also asking for some insights and information. I'll share a couple of it. Just, if you want to see every card that was in the read, you'll need to back up. But uh, <laughs> the uh, the plans behind Milton were kind of indicated here. And uh, <laughs> those planners aren't too happy. Now, I interestingly enough, as far as intuitive nudges that I got, I am getting the information that actually both sides aren't too happy about that. That's hard to think, but there are members of both sides. I mean, there's all the negative side that is, but there are those in what we would call the white hat camp that have been kind of hopeful that when we shift away from into the light, that they would still retain their, their power, their control, their authority, and haven't totally bought into the fact that they have to let go of that, that they have to kind of work themselves out of a job. And uh, so there is actually some sadness on both sides of the aisle here. The uh, recent past was humanity taking a big step forward onto a new path, and that is one of understanding our collective power and claiming it and using it. The uh, um, That was pretty much what we got out of the, the read. Now, 
This coming Sunday is the third Sunday of the month, and I host a live stream on here on YouTube, unless I'm in trouble, and then I'll do it over on Rumble. I, I host a live stream meditation that is non-denominational, and everybody is welcome to um, participate in a positive way. Now, normally, um, I have my idea for what our main focus is. They're always positive, and we welcome after we touch on that main topic where we welcome all positive intentions, and that will still be the case. But up until today, I was thinking that I might do something else. But based on this read, here's what I think we should do. And I want to thank my viewer and friend, Bara in Germany, who, Bara, pardon me, <laughs> who uh, gave me the idea for this. And I thought, well, I'll wait to see what the cards say about Milton. If we as a human collective had the power to make such a difference in the storm of Hurricane Milton, we have the power to think about the upcoming elections here in the United States, but also there's, there's upcoming elections all across the world, that we can have the intention that plans to do shenanigans fail, that there is integrity to the results, that they are believable, they they demonstrate the collective will, and I think that that should be our focus, and that we should be starting to think of that. Now, I say that because, like I said, I'm feeling almost a panic and franticness when I listen to political things, and I know we're 20 days or so out of the, from our election cycle, you know, ending here in the United States, but I feel like, like I said, that there's so much energy out there trying to get us to be anxious, to get us to worry, to be, you know, no, we have, we, if we're doing it right, we adults that are registered have one vote. And if you know who you're voting for, we don't have to give it any further thought until we actually step into that booth or it, however we choose to do our voting, do it. And I personally am not going to give very much more of my energy to things that are political. That doesn't mean I won't still touch on the topics, but I'm I'm not going to give my energy to either side of the aisle. I'm going to participate in the process, but I only have to do that for like five minutes. I know what I plan to do, and I'll do it when I do it, and that'll be it. But in the meantime, where I can put my intention and my energy is into picturing much to the surprise, possibly on both sides, but definitely the, uh, the deep state, election integrity. That maybe for the first time in my entire life, other than 2016 when I, I think my vote counted, I think that was the first and only time that my vote has actually counted and been counted as I cast it. Now, I do think it was counted in 2020. That's one of the reasons I'm still participating. I'm sorry, it's a little bit of a rabbit trail, but hopefully you've got some interest in this topic too. In 2020, I felt like because of Space Force, I had my vote was acknowledged that what I cast was and that while it didn't uh, stop shenanigans from playing out, it was used to back up the the belief that we have a commander in chief that was maybe not who seemed to be inaugurated. I have to talk carefully. So I think I think it counted in 2022 also. And I know it's going to count this time. And if you ask, well, Laura, why are you voting? If you think both sides are trying to keep us back from ascension and what have you. I am going to uh, participate, and in the coming four years, which I think is going to have huge, huge changes, positive changes as our world goes from dark to light, I think I'm going to choose who I want to be at the head of that parade is where I'm casting my vote. I don't intend to ever need to uh, participate in a an election like this one, again, I might participate if things change. <laughs> no, when things change. But uh, I'm going to give it one more try. I'm give them four years to uh, lead us, you know, and, and kind of, like I said, lead the parade 
as we go to places we haven't been before and to possibilities we've been kept from before and to the potential for the human race that I think is going to be activated and accessible in these coming months and years. So that's it. So I'm announcing then <laughs> in a long winded way, participate with us if you'd like this coming Sunday. It'll be two o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock London. You can convert the time for your time zone. It's always at that time. And it's a live stream here on YouTube. And you're welcome to participate. If you can't, you can send your energy to us. Or if you watch it later, because it will be recorded, you can send it back to us. And we'll solely have the amount of energy happening in that segment of time increase over time in a very beautiful and positive way. So our focus is going to be on election integrity. We're going to make it happen. We're going to have elections, whether it is rebellious, illegal voters who decide to just press the R instead of the D they're getting paid to do, or shenanigans in the tallying that don't work out, and the true tally goes through. However, it rolls out because we've got limitless possibilities for good. <laughs> We're going to be asking for election integrity. We're going to be picturing it happening. The results, whether we like them or not, being the actual valid, real results, okay? And then our world marching on into a new place where we, we, the human collective, keep building in our power, our wisdom, and applying that power in beautiful and wonderful ways to change our world in all the ways it needs to change. That will be nothing but good for all of us here. That's it for this video. I thank you so much for your time and your attention and uh, sticking with me through kind of what seemed to probably be a little bit of a rabbit trail there, but I hope it all came together in a cohesive way. If it didn't, I apologize. <laughs> Just remember what you paid for it, right? Because <laughs> I don't charge for any of the content I create, and I never will, okay? If you find it valuable and you want to watch it, it is yours to watch it. No monetary cost to you as far as I'm ever going to authorize or allow. So until next time, if you're willing to receive it, I send you love, light, and everything bright. I will be putting up a scheduled meditation notice, so if you'd like to be advised of it, don't count on it. YouTube doesn't like me too much, so you might want to put a sticky note on your fridge or, you know, make yourself a, a note on your phone, you know, set up a reminder or something, but it will be this coming Sunday, and we are going to join our energy together and manifest election integrity, not just for this country, but for every country that is coming up on some balloting opportunities. Until next time, if you'd like to receive it, love, light, and everything bright. Bye.